All right, here we go, dude. <clears throat> Anybody surprised by this is just got to be kind of ignorant about, and ignorant being just not educated, not aware of what EA is about. Um, EA Sports FC 24 players say... Um, $30 launch week loot box highlights everything wrong with ultimate team. Yeah, you know, I've talked about a lot like the, uh, I used to play a lot of EA sports games back in the day. The NHL games were my jam, dude. I loved them. Um, <clears throat> back in the like early to mid 20 teens used to flip and pre-order those games all the time. And, and until I started noticing that EA uh, really just did not give a crap about doing anything to improve those games. Um, and they actually started doing things to kind of make the mode that I played even worse, which was like, um, the club game stuff, uh, club, club stuff that you would play online with other people and everything. It started getting worse and worse where all they would focus on was the ultimate team. Uh, so basically it was this whole mechanic where, they wanted you to pay full price for the game. And then they, you know, they're also like just wanting everybody to play <clears throat> ultimate team, which is basically just loot boxing to get, you know, cards with real players on them and, and, um, put those onto your team and play other people online with it and stuff. And, uh, it just came off real scummy to me, man. And they, they do it with all their games, you know? And, uh, the thing about it is, it, you know, most of their games don't improve, really. It's like the same game year after year. All they really do is, it feels like anyways, and even looks like, you know, they just take last year's game, they slap the new year on it, take out the, the players that aren't playing from the year before, put in the new year, you know, the new players for that are playing in this year, and they're like, all right, it's good, man. Push it out. Raise the prices on the ultimate team stuff, you know. <laughs> ultimate team is EA's controversial cash cow that brings in hundreds of millions of dollars to the publisher's coffers every year. While FIFA players are well used to EA Sports adding expensive and powerful card packs, Later in the year, uh, long life of the annualized football game with the launch of FC24, the community has reacted in shock to a $30 pack available to buy before the game even properly launched. The Elite Season Opener Pack, currently available in the store, costs 285,000 Ultimate Team Coins in the in-game currency, or 3,000 FC Points, the premium currency. 3,000 FC Points costs around $30. In true video game monetization fashion, FC24 does not let you buy 3,000 FC points exactly in one bundle. Yeah, big surprise. So you'll have to buy either like a 40 or $50 bundle or like, it'll probably be like, a you know, or you'll have to be buying like two $20 bundles, something like that, right? Yeah, check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they gave you just almost enough. This is exactly that kind of EA play, dude. This is This is what they do. So you can see right here, the, the pack costs 3,000 FC points. But if you want to get 3,000 FC points, you've either got to buy um, two of these, which would put you at 3,200 FC points. Yeah. Um, or you would have to buy two uh, or three of these. That would be like, what, 24 euros? Same as this, 24 euros. Or this, you'd have to add two of these, or one of these, and two of these, or one of these, and one of these, or just one of these. And then you could buy another one of these, and you could buy, get two of the packs, but they don't give you an exact amount that you could just get this pack with, right? That's that's what they do, man. All this, you see, the, EA is not the only one that does this, though. Let's be fair, okay? Um, EA is not the only one that does this. This elite season opener pack is so powerful; it's causing some players to call FC Twenty Four pay to win right out the gate. It contains forty five rare gold players rated eighty or higher, one of two player pick lone base hero rated eighty seven or higher, one of two 
player pick loan base hero rated 88 or higher. This stuff's always been pay to win. It always has. Um, but yeah, this feels real gross. It's worth pointing out the cards included in this pack are untradeable, which means owners can't sell them on the FC24 transfer market. Still, it's a pack that theoretically provides the buyer with a powerful squad at the launch of FC24, which we should remember is a $70 video game on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and $60 on Switch. So a full price AAA video game that they're also just sucking money out of. You know, this is what I talk about all the time. So we had, over the past year, AAA video games went up from $60 to $70, and there were uh, a lot of people. I have videos of me explaining this on our YouTube channel, but we had, you know, I had a lot of people that would try and take up for the industry almost. Well, the video games haven't raised prices in 20 years. Yeah, they have. Just not the way that you're looking at it. You know, <clears throat> they had definitely raised in prices and there's uh, all kinds of monetization things that go on in games where they've raised prices on you. You just don't look at it like that, right? That's where, you know, I think that people being educated on the things that these, uh, special, especially the big AAA publishers and developers do to you uh, to get that extra money out of you, they're making you pay extra for games. You might not look like it, look at it like that because you're not paying up front extra for those games, but on the back end, you're quite often having to pay extra to get all the content you need out of those games. Whether it be, you know, to get the full experience of something like Ultimate Team Gameplay or, you know, DLC that comes out for a game two months after it drops or Battle Passes or... I mean, you name it, dude. There, there's all kinds of ways of transactional stuff in games where they're they're making you, you know, pay more and more and more for games, even over the base price of the game, right? That's the thing that people have to take a critical look at. And, you know, this comes down to, you know, the the industry talking about, oh, it's inflation. It's inflation. We need to raise the price of games uh, off of the, you know, retail games off the shelf. It's like, dude, you've been raising prices of games just... You know, you're trying to make it look like you haven't. Um, and then we've got Capcom CEO, which I just put an article up on our YouTube page the other day. Capcom CEO comes out and says, hey, we need to raise the prices again. Excuse me? What? Capcom CEO comes out and says they, that uh, their company needs to raise prices on us again for their AAA games. Um, after something especially as scummy as... Uh, you know, Exo Primal was. Give me a break, dude. You know, when's it stop? When's it stop? Um, this is the kind of stuff I talk about. You know, you support the great companies that continue to breed. And look, I'm I'm not one of those people that is against paying companies for great content. And the more time you get out of a piece of content, I think the more appropriate it is that you you uh should put money uh, towards the the companies that give you great content. You're willing to to just spend mass amounts of time in. That's appropriate, right? But let's be very honest here. Most AAA studios are not giving you that kind of content anymore. They give you content, which, you know, let's just take a, a single player campaign kind of game anymore. Um, <clears throat> AAA price tag now is $70. And the average gameplay experience that you're going to get hours wise and I'm saying, you know, there are outliers. Don't get me wrong. You know, so hold the criticism for a moment. But mo more often than not, the average amount of game time you're going to get out of a game, and it's not even going to be a great experience. It'll be mediocre, you know. And I'm talking about like the average baseline of AAA releases. Um, what? Somewhere between 15 to 20 hours worth of content. For seventy hours or seventy dollars, and it's just mediocre usually, you know, nothing mind blowing, memorable really. Um, but they need to raise prices again. Give me a break, man. Come on. And again, don't get me wrong. There are outliers, right? You take games like, you know, anything. There are certain companies like CDPR. They make these great, massive worlds for us to dive into as long as they perform well cdpr and um you know bethesda as well and 
And um, you know, Larian, dude, just came out with an absolute banger. But here's the thing about Larian. You don't see anything extra that you have to pay for, do you? You pay up front for the, the price of that game, and you're getting tons of time out of it, right? So um, I think it's it's appropriate for people to take a really hard look at, you know, what's it mean for you to get your money's worth out of a piece of content? And if you get more than your money's worth of what you pay up front, consider putting more into that company because maybe they deserve it. Right. But I don't think that, you know, it's absurd to, to, you know, dive into the notion that many of these big AAA developers and publishers are not providing us with the kind of content, the quality, uh, you know, the, 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 the quality content and quality performance wise, performing games that deserve that amount of money. Most of them don't. Some of them do. Most of them don't. Um, here are the probabilities as of the morning of October 1st. <clears throat> A gold 75 plus player and gold 82 plus player, uh, 100%. Gold 90 plus player, 5.6%. UCL road to the knockouts player, 10%. UWCL uh, road to the knockouts player, 1.8%. Um, elite, and this was for the elite season opener pack. Elite season opener pack again. Well, the Elite Season Opener Pack causes uh, causing such a stir. Not only is one of the most expensive store packs in the history of Ultimate Team, it was available before the uh, game even actually officially released. FIFA fans can't uh, FIFA fans can't remember EA Sports dropping a pack this expensive this early ever. Even though this pack offers buyers a better chance of getting one of the best cards ultimately uh, currently in Ultimate Team, the odds are, are that you will not. It may well be the case that you get 45 players rated in the low 80s or plenty of duplicates, depending on how many cards you already have in your club. Um, quote, knew it was bad value, but figured I'd get something. Redditor appearance deficit said, 185 fodder, 26 duplicates, all below 83 rated, put dupes into gold upgrades and got nothing. Essentially got a poor $100,000 pack or 100,000 pack for three times the price. Um, <clears throat> that's going to be the in-game currency, uh, that they're talking about there. 30, uh, pounds. There's absolutely no way I should be normalized for people to spend that amount of money on a game, which is already overpriced. Redditor, uh, was that Tofoon said in two weeks time, you won't have any interest in any of those players you pulled in unless it is an absolute insane pull. Not to mention this game has a life cycle of less than a year at a nice 125 or NYSE 125. Um, realistically spending anything over 30 to $40 should net you some of the best players for the rest of the game. Obviously it's a good pack, but please seek therapy. If you're buying this first week of FIFA and you're dropping 30, uh, on an untradeable pack. Some FIFA players think this pack is, uh, this pack, this early in the life of FC 24 marks the continuation of EA sports strategy of gearing content towards store packs rather than objectives such as squad building challenges. Quote, LOL, literally just getting packed content. Business ad 561 said, where are the objectives? S SBCs, dead game, man. Yep. Like I said before, this is the same kind of stuff that I saw, you know, back in the day where EA was headed with the games that I used to play. It's just where they get their, their sole focus is just ultimate team and how they can continue to monetize it even more and more and more to a greater extent. They don't care about anything else but making people pay more money, more money, more money. That's it. GI Biz reports sales of FC 24's physical version are 30% are down on those of FIFA 23 in the UK. While digital sales may well make up some of this dif difference, it seems EA Sports switch from FIFA to FC has had an early day's impact. Perhaps sales of this elite season opener pack will soften the blow. Probably, unfortunately. Yeah, EA Sports for some time now has faced criticism of Ultimate Team, which is 
come under fire from children's groups and researchers in recent years for its link to gambling. It absolutely is. It is. It's gambling in gaming form. It's the same thing as gotcha games or whatever, you know, and uh, I've got my stance on this. I've talked about it a lot and I'll give it to you again in a moment. From players for enabling pay to win in competitive modes. Publisher has so far stuck to its guns, insisting players love ultimate team packs and equating their availability through in-game or premium currency as player choice. It is player choice. It's also an addiction, though. Last year, the UK government stopped short of taking action on loot, loot boxes, despite finding that players who buy loot boxes are more likely to experience gambling, mental health, financial, and problem uh, gaming-related harms. Instead, the government said it does not consider loot boxes to be the same as gambling, and as a result, will not make changes to the Gambling Act. Um, this year, the UK video gaming industry agreed new principles and guidance on paid loot boxes, but experts predict it will have little meaningful impact on EA Sports efforts. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Like this has been a, an area of contention across the world through different governments regarding the video gaming industry. There are certain areas in Europe where they've taken a huge stance about not allowing this kind of thing to happen. I think the, what is it like, uh, Netherlands have been a big one, maybe even places like, um, Romania, um, and, and Spain's been a big one too. Where they, they are not about this stuff, dude. And here's the thing. Um, I do think that these kinds of mechanics need to be kept away from children. Um, it is a, a basically gambling mechanic, right? You are rolling the dice. You're, 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 you're doing RNG based, uh, chances is what it is. Random number generator, right? So you're talking about a, a chance based, um, mechanic where you're paying real world money to try and, you know, get something that, 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 you're hopeful for. And it's a rush for a lot of people, right? Same exact thing that goes down uh, for anybody that is addicted to gambling uh, or, or enjoys the thrill of gambling in a an atmosphere of, of somewhere like Las Vegas or what have you. It's the same kind of thing. They're chasing that same um, rush, you know, that, that dopamine rush of, you know, getting what they're after. Um, in the gaming world, it's, it's usually, you know, gotcha games do it, uh, where you're, you're trying to get specific characters to play, uh, in your, you know, quite often in parties, uh, for your game that, that will give you an increased, uh, power, you know, for, for, to, to play with or whatever. And it's the same thing for this. It's the exact same thing. It's just in a, in a sports environment. Instead, you're, you're, you're taking a chance. You're spending real world money to try and get uh, some of the most powerful characters or players to be a part of your team, um, to play the game with, right? It, it's, it's a very, um, gambling esque, um, mechanic that people can get addicted to. Therefore, I do feel uh, very strongly that, that children whom are not necessarily equipped at young ages to uh, mentally deal with and understand what addiction is about, right? Um, I feel like this kind of stuff needs to be kept away from them. Adults, okay? It There are plenty of adults out there that aren't equipped to deal with it either. There are plenty of adults out there that are um, addicted to gambling and things of that nature, but you're an adult adults. You know what I mean? You, you make your own money. You can spend it however you want. There, uh, in my opinion, there aren't a whole lot of things that, that, you know, where other people should be able to tell you how you spend your money or whatever you want to spend it on loot boxes in an EA video game. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm also, I mean, who am I to tell you not to do that? You know, but there are still potentially consequences of doing that. You still cannot deny the fact that it is a very, um, you know, addictive kind of mechanic for a lot of people. They're chasing that rush. It, and whether you're talking about in an EA game or any other, you know, loot box 
gotcha mechanic. It's all relatively the same thing. And um, EA is terrible about it, you know. But they make a lot of money off of it, which is why they're going to continue to strive to do it to a greater and greater extent and not care about what it does to people's lives or anything like that, you know. So um, I don't know. I would say if you have any kind of addictive gambling tendencies, these are the kinds of games you should probably be trying to stay away from um, because it, they're a trigger, dude, no doubt about it. And um, ultimately, you know, adults are responsible for, for their actions. And, and I, I'm not one to try and tell other people how they should necessarily, you know, be spending their money or whatever. But I do think that it's important that children be kept away from this stuff until they're mentally equipped and mature enough to understand the repercussions of, of what this kind of addiction can do to you in your life, you know. I, I am I am pretty steadfast on that that notion. Flipping EA, dude.